Alright folks, just wanted to do a quick video here talking about um, internet bushcraft fire kits. And um, I'm like everybody else, I like to go on the YouTubes and uh, I like to watch other people's videos and look at fire kits and ways to start fire and making fires and building fires and I just find it entertaining, uh, probably just like all of you guys. So this weekend I watched a couple of videos and uh, I noticed that there was a little bit of a... Uh, of a challenge video that was going around that was a guy starting a fire with a single match and uh, <clears throat> what was unique about it is he was starting just a bundle of twigs he really wasn't using an accelerant or tinder or anything like that um, and I watched a bunch of videos on, on fire making and fire kits and one of the things that I noticed is that the more bushcrafty somebody is the more traditional fire starting methods that the, they like to use and it was funny because in, in one of them, this guy was talking about, well, you know, I like to start a fire with a with a ferro rod uh, or, or, or some kind of st uh, steel striking like that. And he goes, but uh, in the case of an emergency, I have this little kit here. And he pulled out a uh, Altoids kit and he had some uh, char cloth in there and he had uh, a piece of carbon steel and a piece of flint. And uh, I saw that in some other videos, too. And uh, I, I think that these people are nuts. I think it's fine that if you are going to put on your costume and uh, go out in the woods and play around, which we all like to do, right? Um, when you do that, I think it's okay to play around and practice with, you know, a bow drill or magnifying glass fire or uh, tinder fungus or, you know, whatever it is. And it's a good knowledge to have, and I think it's a good skill set to have, and I think it's a very valuable to be able to go out into the woods and find things like uh, this is actually a false tinder fungus but it can be used in, in like birch bark and, and fat wood and stuff like that I think it's great to be able to know how to do that and go out and get, get fire but if you're really in an emergency situation and you know I, I don't know how you're going to define that let's say you got lost hiking and it's snowing and it's cold or your car crashed on the side of the road or you live in Atlanta and they had a nice storm and you're and you're stuck somewhere and you have to build a fire um, I want chemical fire and I want modern technology. And so <laughs> as a result, I, I carry things like these matches that, uh, you can dunk in water and, uh, they continue to burn. They're the, they're the strike anywhere. Or not sorry. They're the, they're the storm proof matches. I think it's UCO is the company. There's a couple of different places, uh, you can get them. Uh, I carry things like this wet fire and, um, cotton balls soaked in uh, Vaseline and things like this live fire and then I carry um, well these, these are accelerants and then uh, ignition sources but I, I carry all this stuff minus the birch and fungus in, in my uh, in my fire kits you know I have one in the car I have one in my EDC bag one in my camp bag and uh, that's because I want to have as many options that guarantee bulletproof fire and I get that people are like I can start a fire in any conditions with my bow drill or with my with with my flint, maybe, but I, I don't think that that's guaranteed. And then the other one is is that, you know, not to be one of these what if nuts, but uh, what if you're hurt? What if you need help? What if there's a scenario where, hey, buddy, you build the fire and I'm going to signal for help, or you build the fire and I'm going to try to, you know, do something else. Uh, I just think that <laughs> modern technology and accelerants are the way to go. Um, so, and, and I wanted to talk a little bit, you know my philosophy around around fire building really is is that you have an ignition source whether that's the flint whether it's a match or something like that and then I find it's best to use some sort of accelerant so this is a petrochemical soaked uh, fibrous material that's in here I did a video on these live fires this is a, a chemical that'll burn you can actually float it on water and it'll burn uh, so it's very good for helping you dry out kindling um, I would consider fat wood an accelerant because it's not just wood. It's wood that has uh, resin, tar resin in there that, that burns a little bit easier. Um, something like this birch bark. Birch bark has a lot of oil in it in itself. And so, you know, you start to talk about a natural tinder that has some accelerant, you know, naturally in it. Things like this tinder fungus or char cloth or uh, stuff like that. You know, they're, they're good natural tenders, like uh, I think cattails or, or tender that I've seen folks use or, or some maybe uh, types of bark shaving feather sticks that don't really have an accelerant in them. But for me, the progression of a fire guaranteed is ignition source, accelerant, like 
this, the spark, is your ignition source, and then the gas inside your accelerant. So you go ignition source, accelerant, tinder, and depending upon the quality of your accelerant, you don't even need tinder. You can go straight to kindling and then on to fuel wood. So with this live fire, I can light this thing on fire or one of these, these, these wet fires, and I can drop that whole bundle of twigs on there. I don't need any sort of natural tinder, and that makes my fire easier to get going uh, and, and a quicker and a more guaranteed process. And then you move on to different size uh, fuel woods. Anyhow, that's it. I just wanted to post this up. Um, I think the premise of the video or my point is, is that while it's fun to play around with natural tenders and uh, primitive fire starting methods, I personally don't think that uh, that it's a that it's a foolproof plan, and and it's probably setting you up for failure in the event that you really do have an emergency. I think that uh, we've learned better ways to build mouse traps, and I think we've learned better ways to build fires. Um, you know, that being said, you know, I don't want to get into the what if scenarios. I've done videos on that. I think that they're a little bit silly, but when you are prepared you have an all-around kit or an all-around system that helps you guarantee fire. Um, and I just think that modern technology plays a big role in that. Anyhow, that's it. Just a quick video. Thanks, everybody.